starts to congeal and maybe gets two layers and then it needs a little bit of heat at that time they didn't fit in the same jar so i'd use two jars this one's getting closer to what you just said uh-huh like i can see if i look into the top of it i can see two layers yeah ah uh, yes yeah so you get your kind of oil layer and your liquid layer so that'll usually be like water uh, once the ethanol is gone it'll be a water content left with that kind of thick oil and then you just let it sit to get the water content out or do you filter it heat it um you can't really filter it again very easily it's much better to heat because that you can drain off some of it i know um jade forest who makes some absolute she'll actually drain off the excess liquid i usually heat up the mixture to get the last bits of water out of the the sorry the last bits of resin out of the water is there a best practice um i'm not sure really which is best because i haven't tried those materials where that process of filtering off although i've done it myself a little bit um i think really it's a very very similar process and perhaps the way i do it you might get a little bit extra of the absolute got it okay so today welcome back alex with Melafluence. Hello, um, great to be here. Thanks. It's been a while. Uh, we're in the holiday season. Do you guys, you're in the UK, so it's you have the full holiday season too, all, right? Yeah, yes, yes, of course. Days off and all that stuff. Yeah, but I think with this kind of current situation, it's, it's almost a lot of people have their days off. Um, How is the situation over there? Pretty tight? Yeah. Lot of them? It is, but, you know, um, a lot of people kind of have just getting on with life. I think they're just getting okay. on with it. And, uh, yeah. It's half and half here. You got, I mean, you just whatever you believe, you got to keep your mouth shut out in public. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it, uh, it's tense. It's the most tense I've ever seen in the States uh -huh. as far as people divided. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you believe in the mask or not, you just put one on in the stores and uh -huh. But th then you go to these like vacation spots and other hot spots and it's just normal life. Yeah. So it's yeah. just a weird, weird, yeah. weird thing. Situation. Anyways, we need to move on. <laughs> yeah. Do you like these bottles? I, I, I got a good deal on these ones. They I like oh, nice. yeah. I like them because I can do this with them. Yeah, yeah. That's the only reason I, I chose these versus I don't know if the, again, I don't know best practice. So I'm like uh -huh. I love doing this, so I bought these ones. Yeah. I think it's quite helpful with the absolutes uh, to keep movement going with them. So they're quite good for, I think, in chemistry where they rotate. They'll have an arm and it'll rotate and it can be under a gentle heat. And that mm -hmm. way it can um, get the best kind of texture to the oil. Um, Interesting. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to let you take over. And then I have I got an order in in between our time that I'd like, I have a couple dumb questions that um, uh, I don't know anything about that you could help me with. Sure, sure, yeah. I'll, but I'll let you take over with um, that you're doing an ambergris. You're going to grade it? Yeah, so I'll just um, mash it in this. Uh, okay, it like we did before. Yeah. So this might be a little bit noisy me doing it um but yeah just basically kind of talk i got a, a a really nice piece of um ambergris here uh and it's quite unique uh piece it's it's in between kind of brown and gray ambergris so it has the scent that's a little bit fecal like brown ambergris but it also has that really pleasant creamy musky quality of gray ambergris mm -hmm. so um I, I chose this piece particularly because it had been sitting in seaweed um for a while the gentleman told me so it had kind of absorbed um some of the scent of the 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 seaweed in it which is you know quite a unique quality um and it's amazing how it does just absorb scent of other things that's part of one of its benefits mm -hmm. of perfumery um, sounds, so like, perfect. sounds like uh -huh. you're perfect for something called Oceanus Part 2. Yeah, for sure. I, I've been actually 
taken quite a few um, new atters and I found out that the most, um, what seems to happen is that all these old atters um, seem to combine together and go up into another new atter where it takes parts of like older atters. So the new series I'm doing are, are quite like that. They take, say, for example, Fire of Roses was an old atter and um, kind of merge it with Tadasu no Mori, which was a Japanese plum mm. uh, and cherry blossom atta. So they've kind of fused together and it seems to happen automatically. Like I don't actually choose to do this when I set out and make an atta. I just follow the, the smell and uh, it seems to lead to that. That brings up a good question. So like I love rose. Obviously, Eastern perfumery is rose is one of the top five ingredients. Uh -huh. of popularity but it's one of the only few that don't age do you yeah. do you consider that when you make your guitars because that's uh, that's a downfall for collectors yeah it, it was it was always a very important point to me when i started making atas to make them with time in mind that they're going to mature better and better and better um so yeah, that was a major factor. And it's a reason why I don't make many citrus kind of atas mm -hmm. or um, mainly citrus. A lot of other ingredients are okay, but I'll try and find other things to replace, say citrus essential oils, um, tinctures uh, or melanges are, are really good options. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a little bit more moist. Um, it's Fresh. Ambergris. You can see yeah, it wow. does stick into the, um, so, to the, the mortar. Yeah. Along with a question on the ambergris and frankincense, uh -huh. there was more than one person. There's about three people that are like, just use a coffee grinder. And, and one person actually did and reported in the comments. Yeah. What I mean, it seems like you're going to lose some ambergris in a coffee grinder. I don't know if I would dare do that. Yeah, Plus, when you see, look how like waxy it is here. Um, wow. It sticks to the a little bit falls out, but a lot of it sticks to the actual mortar. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look on the top of here. If you're going to do that with the coffee grinder, it's going to get clogged up. So, unless you have a really dry piece, well, it will turn to oil, right? It will. It would end up turning into oil in the coffee grinder. Yeah, it probably would with the heat. Yeah, yeah, the friction. Yeah, it's probably just going to clog up. So I wouldn't dare try it myself. Uh, what might work is if you're doing like a co-maceration or a co-tincture mm -hmm. is to add something dry with it. And that might actually make it work in a coffee grinder. Um, say if you poured in sandalwood powder with your ambergris, that might actually prevent some of that wetness um, and that wackiness, but still... It, it, it's a little bit risky. I think um, for the best results uh, and taking your time with a knife is probably the best result or a greater. Um, this is second best option doing it with a mortar. Um, what would be best than the knife? The knife is the best? I think so because um, when you use the knife and you're shaving it, you use a second knife to kind of keep cleaning the knife to make sure it's sharp and cut it because otherwise it will clog up um so i think what i'll do here i'll take like the largest pieces out and uh use what powder i have weigh out what powder i have and then put it straight into the um bottle and then i'll leave this open so that it can air a little bit and it'll make it easier to get the rest into powder and smaller pieces um See, I'll remove these large chunks here. See, you're, doing, really you're, you're doing your whole piece. You're doing the whole your whole piece of ambergris right now. Yeah, I'm crushing the whole lot of it because half is going to go into a absolute, and half will go into a tincture. And this is generally what I do whenever I get new ambergris. I'll um, macerate half and tincture half, and then some of that tincture I'll remove away and make into an absolute. So then end up with three different kind of forms of ambergris that are used for different things. Um, the, the resinoid would be mo used mostly to like get the real scent of ambergris in a perfume. Um, and it's a slight shame to use it 
in moderation because it has such a beautiful note. It's really good to have that small quantity of oil that's extremely potent when you're making atta rather than a large amount of oil that's not as potent. So I much prefer to have more potency and smaller volumes because that translates in the atas and you can get really good, strong smells of ambergris. Whereas if you're doing a maceration, you might be hard pressed to get the ambergris over the scent of the sandalwood. And um, because the sandalwood always kind of blends in quite a nice balance with the ambergris, but it's always there. It's, it's maybe 50-50 in scent a lot of the time, depending on how strong you make it. Um, so yeah, what I'll do, I'll weigh out this little bit um it's quite good to have like a little container of some sort to put mm -hmm. on your scales and then do the tar measurement because that powder is just gonna um clog up scales and whatnot so i'll i'll tar this um scale first apologies it's a little bit harder to see what i'm doing i was thinking of doing this in another area where it would be a little bit easier but i wasn't 100 percent sure um how we were going to go about this today we're gonna to have to get you a gopro so you get the you can show everything yeah that'd be really helpful um so with the ambergris it's good you don't necessarily need to get it right down to a powder especially if you're heating it because the ambergris is kind of uh oil mm. and a wax in its nature that as soon as it gets into that oil and it gets the temperature up it's going to let out a lot of it sent into that um base oil that's what happened to mine that's that's ours that we did and it turned straight into um what you just said it broke down perfectly yeah excellent because this was Great. the chunky one if you remember you told me to put in the chunky stuff in the sandalwood yes yeah. it, turned, it turned straight into the wax oil oh wow yeah you can see the viscosity of it the thickness when you move it through the um bottle yeah, the ambergris has a quite a good quality of thickening up um, sandalwood too. How does that smell now? Beautiful. Yeah, I smell the raw, the same sandalwood raw and this, and it just punctuates. I mean, it just, you can totally know what ambergris does when you do this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, you really do. And I think a lot of people, when they just enter in and they smell ambergris, they're sometimes underwhelmed because they think either A, it's a bit too animalic, B, it's a bit too soft when it's in a maceration, C, when it's in a tincture, it's quite hard to grasp its smell um, when it's in a tincture alone, unless you put it on a smelling strip and leave it for a while, and then you can kind of get that aroma a little bit more. But when you're doing the, the resinoid, you get that full aroma of the ambergris. There's no doubt in it. Yep. Um, what, and what I've told people, um, this goes with ambergris, this goes with synthetics as well. Same thing with ambergris. Uh -huh. is if you have a blend you've made and you're very, very, very familiar with. So mm -hmm. I have my muscle oil blend that I've, I've known, I know without a doubt that it's mine over 10 years because I just, yeah. I've used it over and over and over again, my baths for muscle recovery. Uh -huh. Doesn't smell great, but I know the scent. Yeah. So the first thing I did when I had ISO E Super was I added it to that. And uh -huh. instantly I'm like, that's what ISO E Super is. That's and I call it mall air now. Because you uh -huh. just smell it everywhere in every store. Uh, um, tons of shops use it as their own perfume, you know, the projector. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh my goodness. So next thing I did, amber grab the raw material ambergris. I, I take a swipe, I buy a it's 10% tincture from somebody else. Uh -huh. I swipe it raw on my skin and then I put my oil on it and all of a sudden that's what ambergris is. Oh, right. Smell it and but you can do that musk, you can do it with everything. All those all the, all your base like oak moss and you can actually see how they affect and why people use them as as yeah. ingredients cuz it's not about base layers are not about the smell of themselves. Uh -huh. you, as a perfume, you have to separate that. It, it's about what they do to everything else yeah. in your yeah, company. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. So I have here um, two grams of ambergris kind of crushed up. I don't want to tilt it too much because it'll pour out here. 
but you can see the color is a lot more brown here and it really does have Wait, that. Can you show that again? I just put you on full screen. No problem. So yeah, it's still a little bit chunky because it's still quite moist inside. Uh, and when you see the other pieces, you can actually squish them back together. Like they're, they're still very soft. Um, so I'll leave what is left there to dry a little bit in the air and then that'll powder again easier tomorrow or the next day um, for the tincture. Clean up these little bits of ambergris I've dropped around here. So this is going straight into um, this bottle here. So we'll put these together. And that's and not the ideal bottle, right? I mean, it is not. Yeah, I really wanted to use a borosilicate bottle, but I realized I used my last one yesterday. I'm making a customata for somebody, and it was 100 ml, and I needed to use two of the large borosilicate bottles. So yeah, you can see it a little bit easier here. It's quite um, still a bit chunky, but when I show this kind of um, I won't be able to show it exactly, but run through the super saturation process. And this is um, a, a kind of term in chemistry where they get the liquid to absorb more of the oil than it usually would, or more of the material or more of the matter. So it can be salt, it can be ambergris, whatever, it could be bicarbonate of soda. Um, so what you do, you heat up the oil or the base material if it was in chemistry. Um, <clears throat> and then you super cool it instantly after it's gotten to a certain temperature, maybe 50 degrees, 40 degrees, super cool it. So I just kind of did a whole method of this. And what I would do, I'd do a bain-marie, which is just a pan with hot water um, taken off the heat, um, put this in with the sandalwood oil in it, um, allow it to heat up, and I would gently uh, put something in, test the heat of it. And once you can see the ambergris is melted, immediately take it to the freezer. And I would pack like um, frozen peas on top of it, whatever was in the freezer that was cold and would squash the um, bottle uh, as close as possible to cool it as quick as possible. And I found that doing this, this kind of home way, this isn't really the where you would do it in a chemistry experiment, they'd have some other machinery to cool it down rapidly. Um, but I found this works, this really works and you'll end up with almost no sediment and all of the ambergris absorbing into the oil. Instantly, you can do this in a single day um, to make your maceration uh, instantly absorb all of the ambergris. So it was a really helpful thing and it was actually um, something I'd seen uh, JK from Rising Phoenix uh, talk about and I thought I'll, I'll try and see if I can do a kind of home style method of this. I want to make sure I'm hearing you right. So you're saying we can have a full maceration in one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're done. We're yeah. Done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No three months, six months, one year. You can make it instantly. Will it be day. better in a year or, or it it, it's the same? Definitely. Yeah, it would be definitely better because the sandalwood matures and the, the two ingredients need time to kind of come together. And it's just something through experience that I've found. Say, for example, you add myrrh, 10 drips of myrrh and five drips of rose. But on day one, when you smell them together, they're going to smell confused. Uh, and if you smell them on day two, they'll smell a bit closer together. A week's time, a bit closer again, a year's time. And you'll notice that it's almost become one material and it's very hard to distinguish the rose from the myrrh. It feels like one ingredient now. So definitely time is always uh, the best thing in perfumery. But if you want to make something very quick and have all your sandalwood absorb in there, you can have it ready in a single day, but it's going to be better in a week's time, a month's time, a year's time. Will the borat silicate glass handle uh, dry ice? Yeah, it does. Absolutely no. Oh, I wonder, sorry, dry ice, you said. I didn't fully take that question in before answering. I wonder. I've never done that before. I would have to uh, find something cheap or just, I guess, waste the bottle and see if it holds yeah. water or something. Yeah. I, well, they're very resistant to cracking. That's why. Um, so what about musk and sandalwood? Can you do that in a day? 
what's that? Sorry, musk. What, a, what about no. musk and sandalwood? No, you can't because musk is a solid matter and the oil is embedded in the solid matter. The, the ambergris is actually all wax. So it's like putting yeah. a candle into hot water. It's going to all melt. It's not going to absorb in because that's a different kind of wax. Um, but it would um, work in a single day. But musk, you can't, you can't do that with because it is a solid material and it takes time for to get all of that oil out of the... So I don't have ice here. So um, this is after, what are we at, six weeks now? Yeah. And it's pretty good. I, I did, mean, it did, looks, yeah, that I did. looks like the process has already happened. The process that you're trying to achieve by supersaturating it, it looks like it's already happened in there. Um, you have a small amount of sediment. Already. Yeah, you have a small amount of sediment, but I don't think heat would be beneficial. If you've taken the time to do it, then you're okay. Um, so I'm just adding the sandalwood here gradually. I had two grams of ambergris. Um, I was initially thinking, um, do this at 10%. Um, I'll see how much sandalwood I have uh, here. And I'm using a Bangladeshi sandalwood. Um, I just, something I started using recently that's a, got from a, a new source and it's really nice. It's got some lovely. I um, love it. Different, love it. Yeah, beautiful. I got some really nice ouds as well, Bangladeshi ouds and Bangladeshi vetiver and patchouli. Um, wow. From a, a friend here in UK who his uncle is a distiller in uh, Bangladesh and he's looking to do quite unusual distillations. He has like a very experimental mind. So I gave some suggestions. So we might end up with some interest in uh, oh. distillations. One would be a Priprioca, which is the um, South American seed. Beautiful, beautiful oil. Um, and I think it comes in like a small seed pod and it's used in rituals in um, one particular tribe in South America. It might be Brazil. And um, it has a smell like oud, one of the most amazing what? smells. Yeah, called priprioca. Um, very, very interesting material. How many facets uh, the, does it have? Sorry? How many like uh, pr facets does it have? How many aroma profiles? Um, it's kind of nutty, woody, and kind of ethereal, a bit like frankincense. Um, but that nutty quality is so unique and so potent. It, it, what I did, I, I found this material actually lasts so much longer on clothes than it does on the skin. If you get a small amount on clothes, a week later, you'll still smell it. Mm. So I thought it would be a really interesting material for sprays or for things like this that would go on the clothes more. Um, but yeah, really beautiful material, quite rare, quite hard to get hold of. But I have some sources in um, South America that are meant to be completing a distillation this year. Um, so hopefully I'll How have do you some. spell that? P-R-I-P, Prip, R-I-O-C-A, Prip Prioca. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I tend to read things, pronounce things how they're read a lot of the time. This must be a new ingredient. Uh huh. Yeah, this, so it, this is I read brand it. New. Sorry? This is brand new. Yeah, it is. Yeah, very new. I, the first time I got it, I got it from Tyson Mortensen, who um, he has his own distillation equipment, and he did a distillation himself of it. Uh, and it was beautiful. I was really blown away by it. Um, very oudy, one of the closest ingredients to oud um, that I've encountered so far. The, it, it's perhaps got some similarity to Budawood. Um, there was something else I was thinking of. So here's the ambergris maceration so far. Um, so sandalwood's added there, 20 ml of Bangladeshi sandalwood and two grams of uh, this Scottish brown seaweed ambergris. Uh, so yeah, what I would do with this bottle now, I'd probably do that same process of supersaturation, but 
a lot more mildly. I'd heat it up very gently, probably only take it to maybe 30 or 35 degrees. Then I would let it cool down more naturally in the water and then just take it to the freezer to cool it, see how the process worked. If it didn't work so well, I would just do it again um, and see if uh, generally the the heating really works to immediately turn the ambergris back into its oil form and mix with the sandalwood. The cooling is really just to help suspend more of the ambergris in the oil than usually it would be and getting a bit more potency from it. Um, That's cool. And then, we wanted to just, just like, uh, yeah, go on. So I think, how many B spokes do you do here? So, so this two grams is going to be for a B spoke? No, no, this will actually be just for my casual use. Okay. Um, the, the B spoke, at, uh, I'd use the um, borosilicate bottles for. That's why oh. I didn't have any left um, today to do it. So, yeah, that will go into all of my actors and fuel it for a little while. Um, the tincture, the same, it'll go into my actors, and part of that will go into the resinoid again back into my actors. I don't really sell the musks um, themselves very often. And one of the biggest things you brought up here is um, why you can't have the same perfume over and over again. Because you just you talked about the ambergris and that it was sitting in seaweed. All yeah. of them, that in itself is a different profile than any other yeah. ambergris you've ever had. Yeah, I mean, there's just, yeah, yes. I mean, people are so annoyed at these limited yeah. additions, but there's this education that you, uh -huh. for you to call it the same and then one person to be turned off by the seaweed and like, this is not what I have. You almost have to yeah. make it different or, or have to tell them it's different stuff for yes. those reasons. Uh -huh. The kind of idea comes to mind a little bit to me of like, um, temp like temporary, everything in this life is temporary and you, no person is the same. And it's also, this applies to a lot of materials as well. They're not the same. No two trees are the same. They'll have some uniqueness about them. And it's more natural to just go with the flow than to fight the flow and try and make something static all the time because it's it's almost impossible to achieve that static um sent over and over again and that would require those kind of laboratories and chemicals where it's extremely technical that's the other side of perfumery that is hyper technical and lacks yeah. creativity and then you have the yeah. other side which is hyper creative and might lack the technical but the best um is the, that that balance between them where you have the technical aspects and you have the creativity and you're able to borrow from the technical side use perhaps their tools and their machinery and some of their techniques to go with the the natural mm -hmm. uh, harmonious materials that are going to get the best benefit scent wise and physically and medicinally even absolutely mm -hmm. love that yeah um are you do you got more here with the ambergris do you want to talk about another process of it are you going to make this into the four-step process any of this the, sorry um the the ambergris that you're doing are you gonna you know how you take it through your four steps to get the final um resinoid the one that you okay yes. I, I will do that as well with this what i that resinoid process takes a little bit more time so what i would do is um that same process, I would put the ambergris in here. I would put the ethanol in to the same amount usually. So it would look just the same, like here's my ambergris tincture. Then what uh, I would do, I would leave that for a lot longer and I wouldn't heat the ethanol because the ethanol is volatile and you don't want any, any explosions. Um, so I would leave that to mature naturally, ideally for up to a year um, practically it may be ready in three months, six months for some applications. And then um, to get the resinoid from it, I, once all the ambergris is settled to the bottom, I would take a pipette, uh, take off the, the, the clear liquid at the top, um, take off as much as I could without getting any of the resinoid. It doesn't really matter if some of the resinoid gets in there, but it might cause a more gloopy 
um, sorry, I'm referring to the sediment as a resinoid. If you evaporated that all with the sediment inside, you're going to have a kind of unusual gloopy mass at the bottom that might be difficult to purify. So the resinoid process is really a purification process. So you want the, the clear liquid from the top, take that, you have another bottle with just the clear liquid. Now this is just needs to evaporate. Gentle heat could be fine on that. Like I would put it on perhaps a heater, an indoor heater, and that would only go to maybe 30 degrees. Uh, have it on there, assist the evaporation. Once it gets down to about 10 or 20% of the volume, it's going to start to radically change from a clear liquid to perhaps a white um, foamy paste or a grey or brown foamy paste. Usually it's it's quite white or grey. Um, and then this needs heating again because that foamy paste that you have has a water content inside and the oil and the water have merged together and they need to separate now. So gentle heat will immediately reveal two layers and you will have your pure ambergris layer and you'll have a water layer and you just need to get that water layer off. Now you could either take a pipette and take that water layer off in which case you might end up with a kind of ambergris hydrosol uh, where it's going to be a water, yeah, a water base with an ambergris smell, or you could keep heating it gently, allow the water to evaporate off, and that will get the maximum amount of resinoid out of the water too, and then you'll be left with a pure resinoid, which is like what I sent you, and it almost returns back to that same form, except the colour's a bit lighter, so you'll end up with something again like this, which is malleable, you can squeeze it, you can pull it apart, but it'll be a little bit more volatile because it'll turn into an oil on your hands, where the ambergris won't actually do that. It'll leave a small imprint of oil on the smell, but the, the uh, resinoid would actually fully melt if you kept it in your hands at body temperature, it would completely melt. Uh, and so do you yeah. use that to um, tincture again, or do you put that in straight into the atar? That goes straight into the atar now because now that's been purified. You could add ethanol again and there would be no issue with that at all because now you've just ended up with a slightly more advanced tincture. You've purified all of the sediment out and you've refined the scent. Now you could dilute it to what potency you want. Now, generally, I want maximum potency. Um, and it could apply slightly differently, like if you want to tincture it again after the resinoid, that would be a bit more applicable to perfumers who are who are using alcohol as their base and they're using a spray and they don't want any sediment in their perfume because the resinoid will likely leave some sediment in the bottom. Even though it's been purified, it'll still leave um, because it's quite a heavy waxy oil. There will still be a little bit of sediment. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. That's fantastic info. Yeah. So that's really the ambergris kind of encapsulated there, what I, I tend to do with my ambergris. Do you know um, there's probably other methods. Sorry? Do you know anybody else that does that? Um, I think Dan's done it before and Tyson Mortensen's done it. And that's initially where I seen him doing it. And I thought, I'm going to try that too. So oh. Tyson was before me. Um, I was inspired by seeing his... And I really, I didn't read how he did it at all. I just did it my own way, um, just experimented, thought I can do this. Then I seen um, another ambergris supplier. They also offered this as well. And they did it a slightly different way to me and they didn't disclose how they did it. They wanted to keep that secret. Um, but yeah, I was happy to share how I made it myself. Yeah, I hope people paid attention. That was a uh -huh. great info. Yeah. It sounds simple, but it's coveted information. People do not like to share this information at all. It's like completely secretive. Um, you ask a perfume seller like that, and it's almost like you're asking to marry their sister. Um, well, it's ridiculous how simple absolutes actually are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but to ask information to a perfumer, on an yeah. absolute, they give you, you're the first person, I'm like, because you gave me such a simple answer. I'm like, I couldn't believe it because I yeah. talk to the perfumers about it and they'll talk to me in an hour and I yeah. still, I won't have an answer. 
yeah, they'll circle around it. Uh, I feel like they educated me somehow, but I'm just dizzy of, oh man, it's too complicated for me. Yeah. And I think that's what perhaps is pushed forward with perfumery sometimes. It's too complicated, but really it's not. And I get a lot of questions, people asking like, how do I do it? And they're very confused. They they think it might be all essential oils. And then they wonder how you get that thickness and how you get that projection and how you get the, the depth and variety of scent to it. And, and it's just explaining, you know, there's a, 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 such a variety of different extractions from the plants. And it's really important to look at all of them and not exclude things based upon like a, a, a perhaps a hidden prejudice or just a like I don't know what it is like it's easy to read up about it it's easy to learn um just the basics of what they are all the information's at our fingertips and then really you've just got to like brave it jump forward do it test it out be, be experimental with it and don't and some people are worried that they might spend too much money doing this experimentation but you can do it in very small quantities and that's how I started I started in three ml bottles um, just blend in essential oils and I'd make maybe one ml of a blend just because I didn't know what I was doing exactly with these new materials like absolutes and alga wood. No, I got an important one and I'll try to, I'm going to put a shortcut to the video on this one. Uh -huh. What materials I, I did for a perfume enthusiast, I did a video called the, the five materials you or seven, whatever you should mm -hmm. buy to just get used to a whole new level of perfumery and hand perfumery. But moving into making a 1ml, what small handful of materials could people buy to just start and play around with? Which ones would you suggest under yeah. 10? I think um, because passion's really where a lot of inspiration comes from personally for me i'm going to dance around the answer here a little bit is that passion is where the um the interest is kind of cultivated so for me my first blends were like patchouli vetiver arga wood because i was really new into arga wood and i loved earthy woody kind of smells like patchouli and vetiver i was fascinated with them and tree resins so for me that passion was I want to see what these tree resins can do with these new materials like oud and how they combine together, getting really interested in new vetiver types and wanted to know how they would act together. So I just used like patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, arga wood, and I think frankincense, um, and just kind of blend those together. Then little things I would look around like what relates to this smell, because when you're making something it's all about relations to each other how does this relate to that and how does that relate to this oil so mm -hmm. like I said before about building bridges between one ingredient and the next ingredient if you have lab done them on one side and say rose on the other one's an extreme high note with floral character the other is an extreme base note with deep resinous balsamic quality but they share a commonality together rose and labdanum have a lot in common together um so it's almost like one is like a, the the polar opposite of the black dark labdanum and then the other side is like the the white or pink pure clean translucent rose that's so volatile and ephemeral it, it doesn't last a long time it dissipates quickly labdanum is the opposite it lasts for ages but it doesn't evaporate quickly at all it's so thick uh, so then building that bridge between those so I would say if you want five materials to kind of focus on and make something is choose five materials that are related to each other and that might be a little bit contradictory because you're just getting into perfume you might not know how materials relate to each other but say tree resins get like benzoin frankincense myrrh maybe a poppinax, maybe some copal, see how they work together. They're all related, they're all tree resins. And, or you could, like the wood that they come from, so um, like benzoin, maybe styrax, maybe sandalwood, maybe buddha wood, cedar wood, and uh, find things that are related and work with um, harmony first, not contrast, because harmony is the most easy thing to do. It's like all the white notes on a piano, all your basic major scale 
and they're very easy. A lot of children's nursery rhymes are all white note um, things that are very simplistic and easy to absorb that major chord, uh, those major notes on the scale. But the, the black notes are all discord. And if you just play the discord all together, it, it doesn't really work. It doesn't sound so great. But a mix between those two works so well. But the, the beginner level would be start of those harmony or materials that relate together. Jasmine, rose, saffron, um, benzoin, um, sandalwood. Very simple blend. It'll be beautiful, really pleasant. They're all like the different facets of florals in with the warm oriental base of benzoin and sandalwood make a beautiful simple perfume and that's what Sajiro started as just a harmonious blend of uh, ingredients that all work really well together and then later contrast comes in where you're like oh okay I've got to learn how to use those black notes in combination with uh, the white notes and how to excite something out of one oil that another one like um a, a good example is um saffron and labdanum when they go together there's a kind of there's a harmony but there's also a contrast that creates and you get almost a marzipan like smell out of it this beautiful sweetness that didn't exist in the saffron it didn't exist in the labdanum but when they come together they kind of bounce off each other and create something new uh, and that's kind of that next step from harmony is um, starting to make a little bit of uh, chords. It's chord, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, I have some. I have an order. Can I go over some materials with you? On I don't know what to do with them. Yeah, of course, of course. So, um, this one, a couple of you guys said I had to try this one. Hyrasium. Hyrasium. Oh yes. Lovely material, I love it. That, Almost. This is the hardest. It's the hardest material I've yeah. ever felt. So what? How, what do I do with that? Hammer. You need a hammer for harassium. This is not a job for a knife or <laughs> even a pestle and mortar might struggle a little bit with harassium. And a grinder, you will destroy your coffee grinder if you put harassium in it. So yeah, you need a hammer. What I did with harassium. Yeah, yeah, that'll be ideal. <laughs> what I did when I first got Hyrasium, um, I wrapped it in like seven sealy bags, uh, maybe in a different number, and then I just took a hammer to it outside on the pavement, smash it up with a hammer, and then I kept having, it is a pure rock, isn't it? It's, it's a hard yeah. rock as well. It's not your average rock. It's a hard rock. <laughs> Stinky hard rock, but makes a beautiful musk. It's, yeah. it's so what is it is this just peed on or something like that so yeah it's the, the hyrax um is a kind what they say is a, a relative of the elephant it's a small mammal that is found usually in africa um when i was in kenya there's a small place called hyrax hill uh where the the hyraxes are i didn't get to go unfortunately but what they do so the hyrax um, they live in families together and they all pee in the same spot, like a communal pee pub. But their pee's really unlike any other animals. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So what happens, it's actually like a jelly initially. It's, it's quite a thick jelly and it has a lot of hormones in it that communicate things to other members of the, the group so they have this place where they all go and pee in the same spot they all come and smell and they all know what is going on with each other so it's all communication through scent which is another ideal of perfumery it is communication through scent so these animals uh, they'll pee in the same spot again and again and again and i'm not exactly sure why they disband a spot but they will do after a while they'll leave that spot and go to another spot through either some environmental cause or just they naturally move to another area it's not then, good. that's why sorry it's, it's not good yeah it's stunk up yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so what will happen this jelly uh, petrifies it'll it'll fossilize turn into a stone Um, And then that stone has a beautiful smell to it. I'm not quite sure on the time scale of how long it takes for this jelly to 
electrify I, i'm not quite up on that but um yeah over a period of time it turns into a stone uh, which has an amazing fragrance and local tribes use it for kidney uh, i think it's kidney and not liver um uh, medicine so they, they'll go and they'll chip off the rock they'll powder it mix it into something and use it for a medicine for people who have say um, like a urinary tract infection or wow. um, weak kidneys or problems in the kidneys it might be the liver but i, I think it is the kidneys um so when it's used in perfumery when you get your hammer and you smash it to little pieces inside several sealy bags is ideal because you don't want to lose it so each time you're hitting it with a hammer you're going to break some of the sealy bags what i generally do is um take it carefully out of the sealy bag you've ripped to bits because it will rip and shred take it out of there put it in a new one maybe a second or third one hammer it again um just do that process until you've got complete dust and it will be a mess you this will be a messy process i haven't found a really ideal clean process for doing this yet but uh it's a stone so it's quite difficult to destroy and collect all of the powder from it um then you just tincture it um i know uh, mustafa's did a maceration i think of it too have you ever gotten a shipment from you got a shipment from ninja rob right i did yes yeah so his i wondered that that freeze-dried plastic that's like 10 ply plastic yeah yeah that'd be of, uh, that would be uh -huh. yeah so, that'd be better for sure you could trap it in something thick like that and just pound away. Yeah, yeah. I was just using what I had at hand, and it was like little sealy bags I'd used for my samples. They weren't well, ideal. Some of it, because right? some of it would go on the ground, right? Because of the yeah, it did end up happening. I mean, I probably retrieved about ninety to ninety-five percent of the powder um, from it, so I did lose some doing this process. And it was the first time I did it. It was really messy. It was crazy, but I got all of the powder i think i even have still some of the tincture from perhaps three years ago when i first um did hyracium i think it was three or maybe four years ago i bet that um, sounds good yeah but very interesting material and mandy aftel made a she didn't make it sorry she's supplies a hyracium absolute um, which is crazy strong it is so potent and it, it's got a lot of human facets to it it's got like a unusual breast milk quality a lot of people relate hyracium when it's tinctured and when you put it on a smelling strip that it, it has a lot of similarities to babies so there's a smell of kind of urine and nappies like you know when you have a newborn baby and they pee in the nappy that urine <laughs> Yeah, even from an Islamic perspective, that urine is classed as something actually clean until they reach a certain age. So they they classify that urine becomes dirty at a certain age. I'm not sure if it's one year old. I don't remember. But um, yeah, so it has this quality of like urine, breast milk, um, and also blood. There's a facet of blood, uh, especially when it's the absolute that I got from Mandy. There's a kind of rusty smell like iron like a uh, smell of blood in it so it seems like a very human ingredient um i can see all the yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it has kind of intimate quality in perfumes as well it just seems to like make uh, really intimate smells uh, that have a familiarity to them and kind of evoke a, a certain feeling and emotion uh, mm -hmm. towards it yeah. I, I think I found the secret of Malafluence of Tars. Yes. This is propolis. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful material. I don't know why people don't use this more. You're you're yeah. the I can recognize this in your stuff, but nobody else is really. Right. I'm oh, very okay. surprised. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't yeah. know why people don't use this. I don't know what it is, but uh -huh. it's amazing. So propolis is one of the kind of four materials that come from the beehive so you have your honey which is the most common you have your wax you have your pollen and then the kind of least known is propolis and it's um the the name uh propolis it's like city um polis is city like metropolis um and pro i think it's like beneficial uh or positive 
so in what they do, it's um, kind of called bee glue sometimes. And the bees vomit this out. So it's another unusual bodily product of an animal. Uh, the bees vomit this out and they use it to glue places in the hive oh. where a hole may have occurred. And they also use it to cover other dead bees or intruders that have got in to stop bacteria developing. So it's extremely antibacterial, extremely antifungal, antiviral. A lot of people chew it to improve gum health and stomach health. And it's also got a, a wealth of benefits for the immune system and, and killing bacteria. Uh, so yeah, it's generally chewed. That's its primary human use is um, chewing. Some beekeepers will offer a, a proper, like a, a pure honey, which has wax, propolis, pollen, bees, and honey inside. You'll find bees inside. They, what they basically do, they just, because I did honey before I came to perfumery, uh, used to sell honey, so I knew a lot about the bees, and I knew a lot about the hives, mm -hmm. and the different types of honey, and what they produce and make. So I would get sometimes honey that was, um, like comb, wax, bees, pollen, propolis, everything in there. And it looked a mess, looked crazy, but it was super good for your health, um, really amazing stuff. And so the propolis in perfumery, it has an extremely unique note, probably most comparable to labdanum and even chili pepper, like essential oil of chili pepper. And um, when you get it down, it, it forms a kind of, fiery balsamic kind of scent and it's very close to labdanum i feel in its texture especially when you get it into an oil form um i got a, so licorice, yeah, my, a licorice aromatic as well yeah know. yeah definitely yeah it has that kind of dark unique herbal spiciness to it and i guess that would come from and you again your prop list is going to be different from every place because it's based yeah. upon what the bees feed on so like honey is different in every single country and every single state. And well, it's everywhere. not even, it's everywhere. I mean, my friend, he grew plants around his, his beehive just to make the honey yeah. different. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. literally each bee population is different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like each type of bee is going to make a different honey. Each flower they feed on. Yeah. The time of year. And mm -hmm. so the scent of the flower will change to the time of year. It's amazing. Apparently, like desert bees make some of the strongest honey and the, the flowers are very few in the desert, obviously, and the bees are really, really strong and they make this uh, incredible honey, which is some of the most expensive in the world. You can pay like five hundred dollars um, for a kilo of this honey. I'll have to talk to my parents. They live in the desert. So I oh, grew up. Wow. In the desert. Yeah, that'd be very interesting. All right. The, the big one. Th this one is because of you. A hundred percent. Mm -hmm. on each uh, yep yeah beautiful so, ingredient do again. i have to pound these down yeah you want it in powder form um very easy to crush with a pestle and mortar very easy maybe even this is coffee grinder job maybe <laughs> but, i mean it's slightly sharp so it depends on how tough your coffee grinder is but i think they wouldn't cause too much of a problem in a coffee grinder. Depend on how thick some are as well. You want to check and make sure some aren't too thick and brittle. Yeah, that looks exactly like what I got. Um, yeah, they call them devil's fingernails as well. That's beautiful. The smell is very light, but it, you uh -huh. get aromatic. Yeah, and the smell changes quite considerably when when it's tinctured and especially down to its resinoid form the smell is such a surprise it is almost like 90 percent of its scent is hidden you're only smelling 10 percent wow. of its scent through there you'll get so much more when you um tincture and turn this into an absolute but now, yeah anicha comes from uh-huh well real quick um on the tinctures would you just do a straight up cane alcohol or, or should i try one of my fancy alcohols um your fancy ones sound really interesting and i've always used like a standard alcohol like a kind of either wheat or molasses or cane um so it'd be really interesting to know um how those tink how those alcohols are going to affect the tinctures yeah i'm curious with that i might try and speaking just that. before we shoot off here's um bee pollen tincture here in a big honey jar too 
That's um, 80%. Yeah, to you so much. Yeah, I wanted to really, and I tend to go pretty strong when I do um, tinctures. I go strong, but it got a beautiful collect to it. Uh, it's something I'd never tried before is bee pollen, and I had quite a big excess from when I used to sell um, honey. So yeah, I, I did this and see how this turns out. It's an absolute two. How's it smelling? The ethanol so strong it blinds my oh, sense of smell. Oh. Um, yeah, it's hard to even smell anything through the intense ethanol. I always have this difficulty smelling through um, yes. ethanol and tinctures. No, um, so I the the new ethanol I have, my uh -huh. tinctures I can smell through them no problem, and they're powerful and great. The uh -huh. old perfumers alcohol is the same with you. Like I still have uh -huh. the bottles that are two years old, and I can't smell them. Oh, okay, right. Like this, oh, that's this, really interesting. this the back yeah. was two years old. Uh -huh. It's down that much, and I can still smell this. This alcohol is just not. I'm telling you, the other alcohols are a game changer. Yeah, yeah. I'm very interested in that. It's something that I think will be really beneficial. It's made France. Oh. oh, I'll have to. See. Yeah. Yeah, they are from France. So I wonder if you could. Because I buy your stuff so much, I want I want you to be. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I always appreciate this kind of, you know, every. Everybody has something to give and contribute and add. Um, yeah, and I, that would be a really interesting thing. I'd really like to do that. Do you play with dragon's blood at all? I know this is just the resin, so it's the same as frankincense, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's got a quite unique property. So there's two types of dragon's blood generally. There, there are more, um, but two general. If I remember rightly, it's uh, Daemonodron. Draco drops. It's a very unusual name. I don't remember the um, the second one, but it's a very unique Indonesian tree um, that looks so unique too, um, uh, and produces this uh, kind of blood-like resin, which again is used as a local medicine. I, I don't remember exactly what it was used for, but I've used this in um, macerations, and I don't think I've. And no, I haven't done an absolute of it, but I think I did a tincture of it. Uh, and I've not done it for quite a while. I think one of the tinctures I made about three years ago, 2017, and I've not done anything with it yet, but it has a really pleasant aroma. It's kind of a yeah. similarity to rose, I guess, like rose absolute without the floral qualities. It, it's got some similarities to kind of benzoin too. It's like in between benzoin and rose. Um, but depending what type you get, the, the two different types can be a little bit different from each other. Nice. And I know we have to end here. Um, I want it's the holidays. Is are, are you offering anything in the store special or just I'll probably I'll, I'll probably be doing a sale at some point. I mean, I never I don't like to ever coincide with other things. I don't do Black Friday sales or Easter sales or Christmas sales or anything like that. I just do them sporadically when. You know, I've got all my parcels out. I'm a bit like cleaned. I've got a lot of that I made. It's like, right, okay, I can do sales now. I can handle all that business coming in. When it was busy time, I could not handle doing no. a sale because it would have increased past my capacity. And I was like five days behind on a lot of orders, I think, after some of the videos came out because it was so popular. And that's brilliant. I love that. Um, but it, I can only handle kind of so much at a time. So I select those times that are perhaps a little bit less busy to do sales. Um, and we might be, you might be putting up a package to do with everybody on here in the next like two mm -hmm. or three months. So yeah, people yeah. Can buy that, the, the, the Atar package. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. yeah, we, yeah, we've been discussing perhaps maybe uh, an Atar with perhaps 10 ingredients. Um, offer these 10 ingredients so you can make the atta yourself if you want to while I make a video with Brandon and kind of guide through how, how I would do it myself and then that can be a kind of instruction for those watching to um, copy and find and learn from that just how the atta is constructed what balance of different ingredients they would use between absolute CO2s, essential oils, base oils, macerations, and so on. Um, and then they could sit on it and add their own flair yeah, to it. And, of course. 
yeah and that's a brilliant mm -hmm. thing and i think maybe what it can be is just making a very basic at home and i'd love feedback from other people who did participate in this to like send their versions like you know they add their little flair to it it'd be really nice to kind of um have like a, a community develop um around that so yeah while you're fixing this as well i could show the this is a propolis tincture as well so taking that material that brandon has again i've used about 30 percent propolis maybe 35 percent uh and then ethanol um to make that and that will be turned into another absolute for some more propolis type atters again smells very strong of the ethanol but the propolis shines through Sorry, yes, yeah, well, and that's that's like a wax too. We didn't even say that. It's more like a wax material, so maceration yeah. tincture. It, uh -huh. It's like an ambergris, almost not not the same scent, but the same way you work with it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so making that resinoid, it would be very much the same process, um, and pretty much everything is everything is pretty much that same process. The only changes are just in that final stage some of them go quite unusual depending if they're resins or waxes or herbs or um hyracium like a stone awesome and then next time we'll do the letter b um uh -huh, sure. that sounds good yeah right well thanks for being on everybody have a great day and be blessed thank you alex for being here excellent thank you very much for having me and it's always a pleasure absolutely okay Thank you.